Hello friends, the problem we are going to do today is one of the most versatile, most asked question in the history of uh, lead code questions. Like if you just look at the sheer numbers of the amount this question has been asked and the range of companies this question has been asked it, like it's just mind boggling. Uh, whatever your dream company might be in the entire world, this and if they do good technical interviews, they must have asked this question probably at least two, three, five, ten times uh, to their candidates. If I only had ten minutes to prepare for a technical interview, I'm going to choose this question at my, at the top of my choice. Like just look at the the num the companies over here, like Amazon, Microsoft, Bloomberg, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Oracle, Apple. ByteDance, which, uh, which is basically TikTok, DoorDash, Yahoo, Paytm, uh, Walmart, Tesla, Samsung. So I doubt that there are any companies left that didn't ask this question. And the question we are going to do today is number of islands. And uh, I'm going to pay my utmost attention to this problem. Now in the input problem. We are given a grid of m cross n uh, as a 2d binary matrix and uh, in this particular grid we are uh, the all the cells are filled with either values of 1 or value of 0 and whatever the value that represents as value of 1 actually represents land in the real life and all the values that are uh, marked as 0 is actually water and uh, we need to find that what are the total number of islands inside this particular grid now based on the definition we know that uh, suppose if we have uh, some sort of body of uh, land something like this and if it is entirely covered by a body, a body of water we can say that this particular body of uh, land is actually an island and uh, we that is what we are trying to find in this given problem. Now we are also told one more thing that at the edges of this particular grid like all of these values this is also water which means that suppose we are given uh, an input like this where uh, all of these values are zeros and we only have just one single one over here this we can also conclude as an island because uh, on these three sides of the island is already water and on the outside is also water because we are told that everything on the outside is also water so just keep keep this in mind that if we find some place at the edge of the grid we still consider it to be surrounded by water if all the other side inside the grid is also water and our aim is to find that uh, how how what is the maximum number of islands that are present inside the given grid now this problem is actually pretty simple like if you if we just see over here like in this particular input if we try to find uh, for this example one that how many number of uh, islands there exist actually there only exists just one island and that is uh, this one because notice this that these all ones are actually able to be connect uh, with each other because they are adjacent to each other uh, if for any particular cell uh, suppose this is marked as one and this is a part of land and uh, any cell adjacent to this cell is also marked as one we can say that both of these are a common part of a land because there does not exist anything in between they are right adjacent to each other and this is what we are given over here so in this example we only we can only find one island now if we take the second example we can see that there are actually more than one islands so this is the first island that we can find this one is by itself uh, and if we see all four sides of it uh, this is zero this is zero this is zero and this is zero so this is also an island and these two ones they are also an island so in this example we actually have three uh, di three distinct islands okay suppose we are given a custom example like this and i have uh, mentioned in my previous videos that it, it is really important to come up with your own custom examples because it shows that you can think on your own and you can create test cases on your own it's a really important skill for any computer engineer to have now suppose this is the grid that we are given and uh, this blue line indicates the body of water we have outside of our original grid 
so this is just for uh, understanding purposes i'm just going to get rid of it now so it does not uh, become an issue and i can explain the problem better so we know that there is water outside now the most basic approach is that v starts traversing through the entire grid in some manner like there are bun bunch of different ways to traverse through the in the given grid and we try to see that at any moment if we find one which means that so far we have find a body of what uh, land now since we have found this one we need to see that what are the different islands we can create and we can create bunch of different islands if uh, all the values are relate are connected with one like no matter how many number of values are connected with any single one we would mark all of them as just one island as long as they are, they are connected with each other and basically what we are doing is we are trying to find separate set of ones understand what i'm saying we are uh, I'm, i will repeat we are trying to find separate set of ones so in this example if we just see that how many different sets we can find like we can find this one set of one we can find this another set of ones and we can find this third set of ones and over here we only have one individual element but still that is a set on its own like even if we only have just one acre of land it's still a piece of land which we can consider as island so that is what we are trying to find and uh, let me just revert back okay so now we know that what we are trying to find the most basic approach is we starts traversing through the given input array and uh, we start traversing okay suppose we traverse the first uh, row we don't find anything okay now again we start traversing over here we don't find anything now at this point we find that okay there exists uh, an element one over here the moment we find that there exists uh, an element one over here we are going to call our function and basically what that function is going to do is it is going to iterate over all the adjacent cells and it is going to keep on iterating till we exhaust all the ones that are connected with this one so till we exhaust all the sets that are associated with this particular one so let me just go back a bit and uh, this is the approach we are going to take that initially currently we came to this particular item we find that okay there exists a one over here now that because there exists a one we need to find all the ones that are connected with this one so what we are going to do is we are going to mark this coordinate and once we have this coordinate location first of all we are going to uh, increase the, in the number of islands we have like initially we the number of islands we have is zero now we because we find a, a, at least a single one which means that we have found uh, at least the one island so we will update the the number of islands we have now since we have already updated the number of islands uh, and we have we already have coordinates for this one first of all we will mark this one as zero so let's mark this one as zero okay and now from this coordinate we will try to find all of its neighbors to see that there exist any adjacent ones so over here we find that uh, okay this one is also one and this one is also one so we are going to repeat the same process uh, and remember we are not going to update our islands in this case because we are still connected with whatever the previous value we had found before so we are still in the same set of one that we were dealing with so there is no point in updating that but we have to exhaust all the ones that are connected with this original one we had found before so we will check over here okay this is one so because this is one we will uh, come co will change its value to zero because it it now it becomes part of this uh, original set we had uh, now again we are from here we are going to repeat the same process okay we don't find any ones uh, from this point so we are good but remember over here we we didn't ex exhaust all the possibilities from our original coordinate so we still have to do some work so again we will come back we will find one over here which means we will have to turn it turn it to zero so we will convert this one to zero as well and now from this particular uh, position we will try to repeat the same process so we will check all of its neighbors 
and all of it neighbor its neighbors in this scenario are now zero which means we are good like we have at least exhausted some possibility and we have uh, and we have at least found one set of island okay now we will again repeat with our process and notice that i convert all these three values to zeros because we already found an island over here and now uh, we will repeat the same process so again we will start traversing our uh, matrix and over here we encounter the one again which means now we have encountered a new set of island so we will update the value in our islands we will update this to 2 again we are going to repeat the same process so first of all we will update uh, this one to 0 and uh, now this is 0 we still have to check its neighbors we find an adjacent neighbor again we uh, we flip it to 0 first and uh, again we go to the next element again we flip it to 0 and now we won't find any more neighbors that uh, are uh, basically 1 which means that again we will start traversing so we keep on traversing over and over and over and we don't find any ones but now we are at this point again we find a 1 we update our island so our I number of island becomes 3 and now we need to find all the neighbors that are uh, present in this particular island and we set up all of the those values to 0 so these values are set up to 0 and now uh, uh, we check that okay no neighbor actually has a value of 1 which means we have exhausted all the possibilities of uh, number of neighbors uh, that could be a part of the island and now again we repeat the same process and now we find this one and this is the last element so again we increase the number of islands that we have found to 4 and we set this up to 0 and now because we have exhausted all the possibility and we reach to the end of the grid we can simply return whatever the value we find in the number of islands and that would be our solution suppose we we were given uh, an input with all the zeros like over here we wouldn't have found any island and we, we can simply return zero in that case as well but this is like a very basic approach and the approach we took in, in this scenario is actually depth first search uh, to find the set of ones that are adjacent to each other like we could have used the uh, BFS as well but I mentioned earlier like I'm trying to learn graph theory and uh, first I'm going to master DFS then I will start working on the BFS so that's why I decided to do choose the approach of depth first search in this scenario okay and uh, the time complexity in this case would be uh, actually big O of M cross N time complexity because that is in uh, we have to iterate over entire grid that is given and the space complexity would also be big O of M cross N in the worst case scenario suppose that we are given a grid where all the values are just ones which means that for every any single element we will have to iterate over all the, the entire uh, grid and uh, that could be the worst time worst time and space complexity. First, we will create two parameters, row and column, to calculate the uh, current uh, row, uh, row and column values for the given grid. Okay, and we will also create a variable called uh, island, and initially we will set it up to value 0. And we would update this every time we encounter 1 inside the given matrix. And inside the loop, we will have a condition that if the current i and jth position inside the grid is actually equal to 1 then only we are going to call our dfs function so first we will do island uh, will increase the value of islands and now we will call our dfs function in the dfs we are going to provide the i -th position the jth position and we will also provide the grid that uh, we are working on and uh, once this loop ends like we should have all the set of uh, separate ones and uh, we should have all the values of the total number of islands so we can simply return the number of islands we have found okay now we need to create the logic to implement this dfs function so first we will create a function inside the function we will need the values for uh, 
the row and column again uh, for the entire grid so we'll just name them new row and uh, this would be grids length and we will also create a parameter called new column this would be the first uh, positions length and uh, this is basically the same as finding the row and column we found over here but we need to use it so i'm just giving different names we'll also create a 2d array of uh, called directions this would make our lives easier and allow us to iterate over uh, all the adjacent values of any current position and we are going to initialize it with default values we have this established first we will put a condition that if the current row and column are they out of bounds or not we will also put an additional condition that if uh, the current value we are at inside the grid if that is already zero or not because if that is already zero we won't have to do anything so if any of the, these conditions satisfy we can simply break out of the dfs function and this would be our terminating case if this is not true first of all we will uh, update the current position we are at inside the grid and we will name will enter the value as zero because remember we have already updated the uh, island islands and now we will just run a for loop and iterate over all the four directions so that will be that will allow us to go over all the neighboring uh, candidates of this row and column uh, that we have and now we are simply going to call dfs on uh, row plus direction of uh, zero and column plus direction of one and we'll also provide the value of grid as well and uh, yeah i guess this should be our logic and uh, we can try to run this code okay looks like we messed something up oh okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit the code seems like our solution is also working but it's not the most efficient solution and uh, I'll try to make my solution better because maybe there is some other way we can solve this problem and uh, if I find out I'll probably make a video on that sometime in the future. Meanwhile let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts regarding this problem.